well as that time once again for all of you who love for me to review Japanese wrestling events. It doesn't matter if it's from New Japan, All Japan, Pro Wrestling Noah. Right now, I got a brand new one that I just found out. It's called Pro Wrestling Freedoms, or we just call it Freedoms, but also review two events by none other than Yoshi Promotion, Ice Ribbon. So let's review, talk, and discuss on this episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted WrestleZone, all things that it's pro wrestling from AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotion, wrestlers, matches, and championships. <coughs> I'm your host, J-Rod here. So let's begin to talk more about Japanese wrestling, and I just found a new one. I just found out about it today. It's called Pro Wrestling Freedoms. Now... Or was simply just called Freedom. So, this uh, particular promotion is unknown to me, but I got a bit of information. Uh, Freedoms was formed on August of 2009 by Takashi Sasaki following the dissolution of Apache Pro Wrestling. The promotion was formed with the motto, Freedom is in our hands. As Sasaki has opened the promotion to welcome every facet of pro wrestling. The very first one's show took place in September 2nd of 2009, and it took place at the uh, Shinkaba First Ring in Tokyo, Japan. Now, I uh, once again, there are times when I <coughs> review a new uh, wrestling event or promotion that I never heard of. There are times I may or I may not know the wrestlers involved. So let's get started. They only had four matches on this one. So, let's talk with the first one. First match, we have a tag team, which is consistent. The first team with Branam Ryu and Branam Kai. Now, I don't know these two guys, but their opponents, I have heard. Alejandro, who I've seen on All Japan Pro Wrestling, and Keiji Fumi, uh, Fukimoto. I might have seen him in uh, Big Japan Pro Wrestling. But much of this event is more like... Uh, ECW hardcore type of thing but the match was good it had none of that it was just a straight up normal match like any other now like I said I only know the the second team Alejandro and KG Fukimoto but however it was them who won the match I was okay with it it was a good match but like I said there are some wrestlers I'm not familiarized with second match it was a six man tag team match First team, we got Kengo, Tomoya, Hirata, and Yuya Suzumu. I may have heard Yuya Suzumu, but I'm not 100% sure. <coughs> it's possible I might have seen him in Big Japan Pro Wrestling. Facing on, Gentaro, don't know him. Violento Jack, oh yes, I have heard of him. And of course, Mamet Sazaki. Now, the match was also another straight up normal match. No hardcore death match, those type of things. But it was really good, in my opinion. I did enjoy it, but however, it was Gintaro, Violent, uh, Violento Jack, and Mamis Zazaki that won this one, their match. Now, the next one is called Pain <coughs> Paradise Scramble Tornado Death Match. It's a very interesting match. Basically, it's anything goes with weapons. <coughs> it's consistent with the faction Unchained. And the first team that comes out is Rina Yamashita, who I'm surprised she's from Ice Ribbon. Yes, you heard me, folks. A Yoshi wrestler involved in a death match. Don't ask me why. I don't even want to know. But I can tell you this. She really killed it. 
teaming up with Minoru Fujita, who is part of Tokyo Gondera, facing off Unchained, Masashi Tak uh, Takeshi, and Jun Kasai. Now, I, I know Jun Sakai. I've seen him on various All Japan Pros, and he's the current um, Gora TV champion. But, man, that match was crazy. Razor Edge. You know, all weapons they brought in. But frankly, I wasn't sure how Rina Yamashita, in, to be honest with you, can withstand this type of match. Because, like I said, it's a death match. Normally, you've seen this with mostly with the males doing this. But, man, she really hold her own. But I was surprised that Rina and her partner, Minoru Fujita, won the match. I'm like, wow. Unbelievable. So, yeah. Then we got the next one, which is the last one, the main event. The Florence Light Tubes Deathmatch. Which consisted of Takayuki Oiki, who I don't know. Toshiyuki Sakakuda, don't know him. And then there's Tak uh, Takashi Sasaki, who is in fact the founder. Teaming with Toro. Sugira. Now, I don't know much of these guys, but this is one of those matches where you use the light tubes, the ones that you use in the ceilings. That match was crazy, too, like any other death match you've seen so far. But I didn't expect a lot because here's the thing. Learning that this guy, uh, Takashi Sazaki, is the founder, I would have assumed he won, but it didn't go that way. It was the other team, uh, Uyuki and... Sakuda, who actually won the match. So, that's how it ends. Now, you probably ask me, how can I... You can watch this event if you're into the whole deathmatch uh, scene. Like I said, you can go to the link called um, watchwrestling.la. You can see them there. Go to the archive section, and that's where it'll be. So, I think that's it right now. With Freedoms, let's move on with Ice Ribbon right now. Alrighty, so we got Ice Ribbon, their latest show, their recent show took place on the 10th of January of this year, it's called New Ice Ribbon in Skip City, no, there is no city called Skip City, it's just the name of the venue, so the first match we had Nao Ishikawa taking on Ibuki Hoshi, that match went a little more pacer, but however it wasn't really good, However, it was Ibuki Hoshi that won the match. Now, I'm not sure if I... I might have seen Noah Ishi Ishikawa, but I'm trying to remember. Because I've been watching a lot of wrestling recently. This is what I do now since the whole t thing with the quarantine and parent thing, all that stuff. But hey, I'm not judging. Next match, we had a tag team match. First seen, Lovely Butchers, uh, Mochi Miyagi, and... Hamuko Hoshi taking on Rebel X Enemy. Rina Yamashita. Great to see her again. And Maya Yukihi. So, once again, this is another interesting match to watch. Now, at first, I thought it would be the lovely Butchers who would win. Two reasons. One, they're good in in strategizing. And two, they're a bit more bigger than, the, than their opponents. But somehow... Of Rebel X enemy were able to overcome them and win their match. All thanks to Rena, who picked up the victory for her team. <coughs> Next team, we got Yappy teaming with um, Dukushi Aruka taking on Akane Fujita and Riza Sara. Now, these two guys, Akane uh, Fujita and Riza Sara, man, these two girls impressed me with their death match. When I started reviewing Ice Ribbon, I'm happy that they teamed up. And, man, their cohesive is so amazing. Yappy and um, Akura, uh, uh, Aruka, they're, they're good. But to me, I felt it was going to be Fujima and Sarah to win the match, which they did. Next match, we have a six-woman tag team match. We got Joint Army, Matsuya Uno. And Tai Homna teaming up with Cherry, taking on Yuki Yamashiro, teaming with Rebel X Rebel, other members, 
Ram Kaicho and Mika Ozaki. Now, Yuki is kind of close friends with uh with Ram, even though Ram is a little weird. But however, it was Cherry who picked up the victory because she has a title match against uh what's her name? Ram Kaicho for the um Triangle Ribbon Championship. That's in the next segment that I will put out. Then finally, we got the main event. Sa Sadzuko Totora and Tsukasa Fuji Fujimoto taking on Saura Uno and Tuzu Suzuki. Now, this match was more of a preview before, what's her name? Fujimoto taking on Suzuki for the Ice Infinity Championship. Uh, now, anything goes in this type of preview. But however, seeing um, um, I know in Suzuki teaming up, so amazing match. I did enjoy this one a lot, but it did say the statement that Suzuki is ready for anything against um, Fujimoto. So that's gonna be the next one I'm gonna be review their late their next event that they had. So besides Suzuki won the match, all thanks to her amazing abilities. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, so we got the next event by Ice Ribbon called Winter Story. This took place on the 23rd of January in Cork and Hall. <laughs> First match, we got Hamuko Hoshi teaming up with Tsukushi Aruka and Yappi taking on Miko Aono, no, Miku Ono, Moshi Miyagi, and Tekla. Now, however, it seems that it was revealed that Tekla... It has a bit of a bone to pick with um, Haruka. Basically, this is one of those preview type of matches until we see their actual match that might take place. It appears that, what's her name? Haruka has a title that she wants, and she wants it bad. But we'll get to that. But match did end it, in <coughs> and Tekla winning for her team, making a statement. So, that is one of those matches we can pay attention on. Now, the next match, we got Ibuki Hoshi take, teaming with Nao Ishikawa taking on Arisa Nakajima and Yuki Mashino. Now, Yuki it, Mashino, <laughs> to be honest with you, girl, everybody, she teams up with anybody. But, however, <coughs> there's those who are not the nicest ones, but it worked. So, but their cohesive did work so far, but um, it was Nakajima that picked up the victory. But of course, she has no love for anybody else, especially Mashino. So that's how it works with her. Now we get to a three-way tri a three-way match for the Triangle Ribbon Championship with Sherry. Joint Army member Matsuya Uno and Ram Kai Kaicho, who is the current champion. Now, this was also a strategized match. Basically, you see Cherry and Uno ganged up on, on Ram because they know she's a much bigger threat. Now, did it work? 50-50. Because sooner or later, you see Cherry and Uno will turn on each other to see which one will be the one that picked up the victory. That's a great way of telling the story, saying, okay, one of them wants to be the champion. But you got Ram, who knows she, do she do doesn't really need to be pinned. I mean, Sherry can pin Uno and win the match, or Uno can pit pin Sherry and win the match. But somehow, Ram was able to overcome it and retain her title. But I'm sure the others... Are not completely happy with the result. Next match, we got another six women match. Six women match. The Frank sisters, Kane Fujita and Hiragi Kurumi, teaming with Riza Sarah, taking on Izuki Aiko, Rina Yamashita, and Suzuki Torodo. Now, this is another one of those hard hitting match. In this one, I have seen. Um, 
Totoro actually does one of those. Um, uh, she uses her body weight to as a weapon, and really, it it really works. It's really effective, and of course, it was um, Izuki Aoki who picked up the the win for her team on this one. So there was no story build up on this one, but it was a good match to even watch. Now we get to the semifinal match, which is the Inter. National Ribbon Tag Team Match. First team is the challengers. Joint Army, Rina, Shingaki, and Taya, uh, Tai Humna taking on Rebel X Rebels. Mikey Osaki and Maya Yukihi, who are the champions. Now, you would expect this match could have gone a way where they picked up the victory. But no, but man, that match was so crazy. You wouldn't expect who was going to win this one. But it was a good one. Now, I wasn't sure if Joint Army were able to pick up the victory. But they put a lot of effort. Great um, spots where they seemed like they had the match in hand. But it didn't go exactly the way. So Rebel X Enemy retained their tag titles. But however, in post-match, Uno who already competed in the earlier match for the for the Triangle Ribbon Championship, which she lost along with Sherry, decided since her teammates actually lost, she decided, I'm going to team up with Sherry and take you guys on. So they decided, so Sherry had a lot to think about knowing that, okay, she's not a member of Joint Army. But it is interesting for her to hear, okay, Uno lost the match, much as like her, but go for the next big thing, which is the tag titles. And of course, there was no translation, but I can assume that Cherry accepted the offer, and her and Uno will completely team up to take on a Re Re Rebel X Enemy. <coughs> I don't know when that'll be, but hopefully I can catch up with it. Now we get to the main event, which is for the Ice Infinity Championship. With challenger Tsukasa uh, Fujimoto taking on Zuzu Suzuki. Another great match on this one. The main event was great. Now, you can see Fujimoto is determined to dethrone Suzuki. And Suzuki would do whatever it takes to maintain, retain her title. But it was simply too much. They almost went up to 20 minutes in their match. But we had a title change. In fact, Fujimoto won the match when she re pinned Suzuki down. And she is now the new Ice Infinity champion. But however, in the, in the post-match, she had some words to say to Suzuki. Now, like I said, there was no translator. But I can sense it was a very emotional one. But now that... Um, Suzuki's been dethroned. Who will be the one to challenge Fujimoto? We'll just wait and see when that happens. So I hope you guys enjoy these reviews of me reviewing Japanese wrestling. There's more to come. I still need to cover the New Japan, the latest two days of <coughs> the um, New Japan Cup. And of course, don't forget we got GCW's latest event, AW Dark, but also. AEW's latest pay-per-view revolution so i'll see you guys in the name in the name uh, next dwz time uh dwz channel so i must bid all of you adieu so goodbye Mwah. have a nice day bang